Hi, I'm Rusty Shackelford with Rusty Shackelford's Grizzly Reviews, and I'm here today with Poseidon. We just saw Bridge of Spies. Bridge of Spies is the true Cold War tale directed by Steven Spielberg and written by Matt Chairman and Joel and Ethan Cohen. This film stars Tom Hanks as an insurance lawyer, James B. Donovan, as he is tasked with defending in court the accused Soviet spy Rudolf Abel, and later negotiating the release of U.S. pilot Francis Powers and student Frederick Pryor in East Berlin. So the first thing to really note is that this is kind of two films in one, or at least two big, clear, separate acts. Uh, the first act is James Donovan as he settles into getting handled the case, getting to, uh, to learn to know Rudolph Abel and uh, get his handle about who he is and his justification for uh, defending Abel and making sure that he gets the right trial and the right uh, all the constitutional protections that should be afforded any person. And then uh, a little bit after this, having to head over to Berlin and negotiate prisoner exchanges with both the Soviet Union and East Berlin. So these two acts, while separate, are obviously connected. And it's actually uh, James Donovan in the first act that predicts what's going to occur in the second. He has the kind of foresight um, to see past all the anger and aggression that everyone else is feeling and predict that maybe one day the Soviets will capture one of our spies and we kind of want them to uh, at minimum hold the same respect that we're going to hold for them and that by making this trial fair um, we're going to have much more ground when it comes to doing sort of a prisoner exchange in the future honestly though i think it really talks talk a lot about his character he's just the kind of guy that wants to really just do the right thing and do what's good for his country even though other people may not see it that way I, there's definitely a line when he when people are attacking him for defending this Russian spy where he says, what makes us American, it's the rule book. And here in the United States, the rule book is the Constitution. And if we don't give somebody a defense and due process under our Constitution, then how can we say that our system is better than theirs? These stories are always kind of fun for me because uh, you see a strong parallel between the past culture and the current culture. You know, a lot of these conflicts that we're currently going through feel fresh and feel young. And then you go back and you step back 50 or 60 years or, or even further back than that. And you see people making a lot of the same arguments that, uh, you know, the issues that we're dealing with today with Muslim extremists, uh, you know, are, are the same kind of thoughts and feelings that people had towards the Russians back in the 50s and 60s. This film does a good job of presenting those topics in a way that's accessible to everyone, uh, but not necessarily beating you over the head with it. And it's uh, kind of nice. To, I'm hoping a lot of people see those uh, those parallels. Um, one, one of the things I want to say, it was kind of weird how the first half and the second half contrast. At the very beginning of the film, they start off with hunting down Rudolph Abel. I feel like there's kind of some darkness and some diminished colors. Tensions are high. Things are moving quickly and fast. Um, and I think that's the only time in that movie where you really feel like, you know, everything is a little unpredictable. I feel like the pace kind of slows down as the movie goes on. But I, I really had a strong impression when we first came. That's actually probably my biggest complaint about the movie is the pacing in the second half of the film. Um, the first half, you know, is actually the tensions are really kind of high. There's a, a shooting incident. There's people threatening to kill uh, James Donovan and that there's uh, just a lot of high tension. And I don't feel that any of that really carries over into the second half of the film. Um, everybody's already established and the biggest problem I see is that James Donovan is maybe too strong of a character to the point that uh, I never really believe that he's got a chance at failure. Um, you know, there are, is obviously opposition, there is conflict, and that's the whole plot of the second half, but it just feels way too in control for it to really be a threat to him ever not succeeding. Just for example, he walks away virtually unscathed from a mugging and the mugger is actually thanking him. Um, you know, all his interactions at the Russian embassy are amicable. And while there is obviously some conflict there, everybody seems to be kind of on the same page. And really only the, the group that's trying to resist against him is this East Berlin because they're trying to get an upper hold um, on the table and look like they're a real power. Um, which is an interesting aspect, but I, I never feel like he's really going to lose to East Berlin, except for maybe one small scene. And, and that's just unfortunate because I kind of want that tension to be there. Yeah, I think they go out of their way to make you think that everybody hates him. Like, he's so good at defending this spy that he is like the scum of the earth to everybody else. No, there's definitely a, a case of uh, the morality that nobody wants going on there. And, uh, you know, throughout the movie everyone 
uh, you know, is basically telling him to sell out at some point. And that's a, that's a little too unfortunate. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of real in some aspects, but at the same time, there's really nobody that empathizes him once he makes a hard stand. I don't know. It would have been nice to see empathy coming from somebody in the first half and maybe a little more of that opposition carried over into the second half instead. I, yeah, I definitely think pushing the thermonuclear aspect into it was a little over the top. The, to the point where they tried to t- have his kids turn against him, I thought it was kind of ridiculous. I actually think that's pretty realistic. I mean, kids were watching that stuff in school. Tensions were high with the Soviet Union. And people own bomb shelters in their backyards to this day for a reason. You know, this is all set up in that period. And so it, it, it's extreme, but it's real. There were a lot of great characters in this movie, uh, particularly Rudolph Abel, played by Mark Reliance. I really liked his character. I, I thought it was fun, uh, a decent bit of humor. Um, and just uh, seemed like a likable spy, at least, not not a you know a scumbag of the earth, and it made empathy with him easy. He has a great running bit where Tom Hanks asks him why he's not worried about uh, dying or, or getting turned over, and his answer is always, would it help? Uh, Sebastian Koch as Wolfgang Vogel was also very impressive, and he had the only real tense scene for me in the second half. I do think we have to mention uh, Francis Gary Powers, played by Austin Stow. He has the best name of anybody ever. He's the man whose name you'd love to touch, but you mustn't touch. Yeah, I think one of the characters that's not mentioned and is not actually a tangible character is uh, the identity of Berlin. Um, I think that of all the drama that was tried to present in the second story arc, I really do feel like that drama was really well presented. You did feel like tensions were high. Um, the wall was being built throughout part of the film and was completed in another part. And you could definitely see kind of the longing for people to escape. Kind of the, the situation that uh, East Berlin was left in under Russian control. Um, partially as what they can see, they considered war pay- repayment. Um, And partially just because they wanted to uh, be the top dog. So for me, this conflict that you're talking about in the second half is, uh, to me, it's the distinction between a good film and a great film. Where there is some conflict there, but it just never feels like a threat. And I I feel like the film is kind of torn between this telling a documentary and telling a narrative. Um, And, you know, you you can tell an interesting story in either way. But in a narrative, I don't know, I just feel like something needs to be more compelling. There needs to be um, more of a threat or this idea that the story could go a different way. And uh, you can you can handle a lot of that through presentation without altering the story. And, I, I, you know, I just I don't know. I expect that to be capable in the hands of somebody like Spielberg and the great writing squad that you had on this. Um, it, it just really never hits the high note for me. And, and that's disappointing. I don't think the film had to lose its touch with reality or the truth to present the film differently. And it, it would have been nice to see something just more tense. Yeah, I, I do think, though, you're going to miss a point if you're going to say that part of the importance of the story is the civility in two countries that are, for all intents and purposes, engaged in an intellectual war and don't want to be civil with each other. Um, it's truly a... The, the movie is presented in such a way that everything goes diplomatically. There are problems. There's a lot of frustrations. People keep getting thrown in jail. Um, and there's, you know, stupid bickering and big egos. But nobody pulls a gun on somebody else. You know, nobody gets in a fist fight. There, while those things would actually add to the drama, I do think that trying to present something like that would make it seem less real. I will say that one thing that is kind of bothersome is that you don't see uh you don't see james donovan face defeat there's never a time when he is faced with um an overwhelming sense of of being beat down he probably should have cried he probably should have broke down at some point and then overcome and gone through it so in that regard i do agree with you but i i don't i wouldn't say that that you know just makes the movie horrible no, it, it's not horrible. Um, you know, it, Bridges Buys is good and definitely worth watching. I think everyone should see this at some point because it's a good story and important to our history. Uh, and, you know, it is compelling in its own way. I just I just don't think it necessarily makes the best narrative. And, uh, you know, I, I just expect more from this all-star team that has produced, you know, so many other greats in the past. Um, you know, in 
in closing, I'm just going to have to leave the film at a 7.5 out of 10. And that's not a bad score. It's just I feel this film had a lot more potential. I, I don't disagree that there's things that could make the film better. It's it's a good movie. I think everybody probably should see it. Um, but again, it's not one of those things like, hey, jump in the car and go see it now. I mean, I'd say probably like an 8-2. We do recommend at some point that you do check this film out and make some time for it. Um, And when you do, let us know how you felt about it. We'd love to hear back from you guys. Uh, With that said, I'm Rusty Shackelford with Rusty Shackelford's Grizzly Reviews. I'm Poseidon. And check back soon for our next review. The house as old as this one becomes, in time, a living thing. It starts holding on to things. Some of them good. Some are bad. Some should never be spoken about again.